What shall we talk about this morning? You could have one question or a request has been made to me that following last night's talk, there have been many questions in people's minds. So instead of talking for an hour, hour and a half on one question, we could have, like the other morning, short questions and quick answers. Hvad skal vi tale om i dag? Vi kan have enten et spørgsmål, som var en times tid, eller vi kan have en, en uh, hurtig spørgsmålssvarssession, som vi havde forleden dag. Og det er der nogen, der har bedt om, fordi uh, på grund af, af foredrag om døden i går, der er der en masse, uh, der har spørgsmål i den forbindelse. Så hvad vil I foretrække? And uh, it would be nice if one person does not dominate all the questions so that everyone can have a chance. Eh? Det vil være rart, hvis det ikke kun er en, der dominerer spørgsmålene, men alle har en chance til at spørge med sig. Mm. Who will I always be with you? Spørgsmål er, vil du altid være med os eller være hos os? Now, the question is, will I always be with you? Uh, I could say no, and I could say yes. Det kunne jeg både svare ja og nej til. This physical body will not always be with you. Denne fysiske krop vil ikke altid være hos jer. But the consciousness that I represent, men den bevidsthed som jeg er repræsentant for, was always with you, will always be with you, har and altid, is with you. Er med jer, har altid været med jer, vil altid være med jer. For the consciousness, or the pure consciousness, that flows through a human being, is forever immortal. For den rene bevidsthed, som strømmer igennem det menneskelige øh, øh, væsen, er for altid dødelig. And as a person has reached the fullness or the total purity of consciousness, og når et menneske har nået bevidsthedens totale rene kilde, that consciousness never fades away, så forsvinder den bevidsthed aldrig. I was invited. Uh, to the ashram of Yogananda in Los Angeles. Jeg blev inviteret til Yogananda's ashram in Los Angeles. And um, we arrived five minutes late because the gates close at five o'clock. Vi kom fem minutter for sent, fordi det er der lukker de portene klokken fem. The place, the ashram, it's a beautiful lake with a little houseboat and beautiful gardens and a chapel. Men den som så efter Asram, altså åbner og lukker porten blandt denne. And the caretaker saw me from a distance and came running to the gate. Så mig på afstand og kom løbende hen til porten. He said, uh, we close the doors at five, but I don't know what he saw. And he said, uh, but I don't mind opening the gates again if you want to come in. Han sagde, vi lukker, vi lukker portene klokken fem. Og jeg ved ikke, hvad han så, men han sagde i hvert fald, at jeg har ikke noget imod at åbne portene igen, hvis du vil ind. This man was a very intellectual, brilliant, God-loving person. Det menneske var et, et meget um, gudselskende, intellektuelt, dejligt menneske. And I'm sure he must have had some top profession in his working days, but he threw up all that just to serve and be a gardener and a caretaker. Og jeg er sikker på, at han må have haft en høj stilling, da han arbejdede, men derfor havde han alt sammen opgivet for at blive en gudsøger og, og portner der jeg sådan. And while talking about various things, Uh, he told me a little story, which is so beautiful. Og mens vi talte om forskellige ting, så fortalte han mig en lille historie, som er meget små. This one chela who went to a guru. 
Det var en tela, som gik til en guru. Så so the guru asked him, why do you come to me? Og guruen spurgte, hvorfor kommer du til mig? Mm. So the chela replies, that my guru is dead, so therefore I've come to you. Og chelaen svarer, min guru er død, og derfor kommer jeg nu til dig. And so this guru replies, that you are dead, but your guru is alive. Så den guru svarer, du er død, men din guru er stadig levende. You see? So, the physical link can be broken. Så den fysiske forbindelse kan The bruges. mental link can be broken. Og sinds øh, øh, forbindelse kan brydes. But the spiritual link, the spiritual bond that is formed, can never be broken. Men den spirituelle forbindelse, eller det åndelige bånd, kan aldrig brydes. In the Gita, when Arjuna asked Krishna, i Bhagavad Gita, da Arjuna spurgte Krishna, a question, and Gita and Krishna replied to this question. Og Krishna svarede til det spørgsmål. And the reply was this, that you and I have been together many times. Og svaret var det, at du og jeg har været sammen mange gange. And in many lifetimes. Og igen mange liv. The only difference is that you do not know of those lifetimes, and I know of those lifetimes. Den eneste forskel er, at du er ikke er bevidst om alle de liv, men det er jeg. So meeting you, my beloved, is not only from these past few years. Så det at møde dig nu, har ikke bare noget med disse få, sidste få år at gøre. We have known each other, many, many of you, for many, many lifetimes. Mange af os har kendt hinanden igennem mange liv. And many, many more lifetimes to come. Og vi kender hinanden igennem mange liv som i fremtiden. So do not worry of this little physical one shilling fourpence chemical factory. Så vær ikke bekymret for den lille billige kemiske fabrik. Okay. <coughs> Next. Jenny. Uh, it's about what you said about children choosing us um, as parents, choosing their own parents. And uh, is it so that the soul can choose to be born by parents who would drive the child insane or into schizophrenia and madness? If is there the possibility of a child being born uh, there to teach the parents some kind of lesson and thereby sacrificing itself? Beautiful. Beautiful. Spørgsmålet drejer sig om det, Gud har snakket om i går. Gud har sådan nævnt kort i går, <coughs> at det er ikke forældre, der vælger deres børn, men det er for det, det omvendte, der er tilfældet. Og spørgsmålet lyder sådan her. Angående, hvad du sagde om, at vores børn øh, vælger deres forældre. Er det sådan, at så en sjæl kan vælge at blive født af forældre, som vil gøre barnet vanvittigt, eller drive det ind i skizofreni eller galskab? Er der den mulighed, at barnet, som bliver født, er der for at lære forældrene en eller anden form for lektie, og der vil måske ofre sig selv for dette formål? Det er finish? Yes. <laughs> Good. The parents can never produce schizophrenia in a child. Forældrene kan aldrig gøre et barn skizofrent. The child, because of its previous lifetimes and experiences, are born with the schizophrenic tendencies. Barnet er på grund af tidligere oplevelser og tidligere liv og medførte tendenser født med en skizofren tendens. So those schizophrenic tendencies are latent in seed form at the time of conception. Uh, Disse skizofreniske tendenser er til stede i latent form øh, ved undfangelses øjeblikket. And what the parents do because of the genetic combinations 
training and environment. Og det forældrene gør på grund af de genetiske kombinationer, opdragelse og omstændigheder. And hereditary values. Nedarvede værdier. Can bring those tendencies to the fore. Kan bringe disse tendenser frem på overfladen. Good. Now this is a lesson that the soul that is born has to learn. Det er en lektie som den selv som fødes må lære. Some lessons are painful and some lessons are pleasurable. Nogle lektioner er smertelige og andre er behagelige. Mm-hmm. But whatever the parents do would definitely be a lesson for the growth of the child. Men ligegyldigt hvad forældrene gør, så vil det afgjort være en lektie der for barnets vækst. You are doing no harm to any child. Uh, I gør ikke noget barns skade. <clears throat> This is a misconception of psychology. Det er en psykologisk misforståelse. And psychology up to the present stage, and I would challenge any professor of psychology on the subject. Og psykologi indtil det stadie, som det er nået til nu, jeg vil udfordre en hver psykologiprofessor. That in this vast ocean of the mind, they've only dipped their toes on the seashore. Er det dette kæmpe ocean, som sindet udgør, har de kun dyppet tæerne i vandkanten? They have planted misconceptions that parents do harm to their children. De har plantet blandt andet den misforståelse, It is at, totally forældre, wrong. at forældre skader deres børn. Det er helt ved siden af. Whatever the actions of the parents is always a lesson for the child. It might be difficult or easy, but life itself is a school, and we have come to the school to learn. Ligegyldigt hvilken hvad, hvordan forældrene behandler barnet, så vil det altid være en lektie for børnene. Livet er en skole, og vi er kommet her for at lære. So we are never ever to blame our parents. Så vi skal aldrig skyde skylden på vores forældre. And at the same time, the parents must feel no guilt whatsoever. Og på samme tid behøver forældrene ikke at føle nogen skyld overhovedet. But there is one thing involved, which is called duty. Men der er en ting involveret, som kaldes pligt. We have our duty to our parents, and our parents have their duty towards us. Vi har vores pligt over for vores forældre, <coughs> og vores forældre har deres pligt over for os. And the greatest duty as parents is to see that the children are brought up well. Og forældrenes første pligt er at se til, at børnene bliver opdraget og vokser op på en god måde. In whichever way they can. På hvilken som helst måde, de nu er i stand til det. If the parent finds that the child has inborn tendencies, for example, to be a carpenter. Hvis forældrene føler, at barnet har medfødte evner eller tendenser til at blive for eksempel en carpenter. En tømmer. Then do your best to make him a good carpenter. Så gør jeres bedste for at gøre ham til en god tømmer. If you, if you feel your child has tendencies of becoming a great mathematician, then encourage him to become a great mathematician. Og hvis I føler, at jeres barn har medfødte tendenser til at blive en stor matematiker, så opmunter ham til at blive en stor matematiker. And this is normally inspired by love, or so-called love. Og det er som regel noget, der inspireres af kærlighed, eller såkaldt kærlighed. Because love can also be a personal interest, hmm? and not real love. For kærlighed kan også være en personlig interesse. But whatever it is, but whatever it is, Uh, we do our duties. 
Men hvad det så end er, så gør vi vores pligter. And the other thing to be remembered, that when we do our duties to our children, we are not doing the children a favor. En anden ting, vi må huske er, at når vi gør vores pligter over for vores børn, så gør vi dem ikke en tjeneste. We are only returning the obligation and the things which our parents have done for us. Vi giver kun tilbage og, og returnerer de ting, som vores forældre har gjort for os. Our parents have done something for us. Vores forældre har gjort noget for os. And we could never do anything for our parents. Vi kan aldrig gøre noget for vores forældre. Mm. We can't give them birth. Vi kan ikke give dem fødsel for eksempel. Huh? <laughs> Fine. So, what our parents have done for us, we return that by doing it for our children. Så so, det vores forældre har gjort for os, det giver vi tilbage ved at give det til vores børn. So from either point of view there is no guilt involved så so, ligegyldigt fra hvilken vinkel man ser det så er der ingen skyld involveret hmm? because the greatest calamity on earth in this special transitional phase of man's evolution for uh, den største ulykke på jorden i den her overgangsperiode i menneskets evolution is the feeling of guilt af skyldfølelse and in whichever way we can by developing this understanding and our spiritual practices og på hvilken som helst måde vi så kan ved at udvikle den forståelse gennem vores åndelige øvelser we get rid of guilt skaber vi os af med skyld when we get rid of guilt we get rid of fear og når vi bliver kommer af med skyld, så slipper vi også af med vores frygt. And all the other negativities that are involved with fear. Og alle de andre negativiteter, som hænger sammen med frygt. For the guiltless man and the fearless man becomes a free man. For den skyldløse og angstløse person bliver et frit menneske. Mm. You see the very closeness of the words. Fear and free. Så jeg kan se, hvor nært ordene fri og frygt er forbundet. Get away from fear, and you become free. Kom væk fra frygt, og du bliver fri. I don't know if the niceties of language can really be translated. Jeg ved ikke, om, om ordspillene virkelig kan oversættes. Mm-hmm. This one could. Se, so... No guilt is to be suffered, but as our duty and as an expression of our love, we do the best we can for our kinders. Så der er ingen grund til at lide under skyld, men på grund af vores pligt og på grund af vores kærlighed, så gør vi, hvad vi kan for vores børn. And there are many ways of doing this. Der er mange måder at gøre dette på. Firstly, people feel, oh, my parents did not do this for me. Først af alt så føler folk, oh, mine forældre, de gjorde ikke dette for mig. But let it make it my duty to do it for my children. Men lad mig gøre det til min pligt at gøre det for mine børn. And that could be a good motivation. Og det vil være en god motivation. I wasn't given this, but let me at least, through the grace of God, give it to my children. Jeg fik det ikke. Jeg blev det ikke givet, men lad mig det mindste gennem Guds nåde give det til mine børn. And if I have been given so much by my parents, let me at least try and return it to my children. Og hvis jeg har fået så meget fra mine forældre, så lad mig det mindste prøve at give det videre til mine børn. And that is how the perpetuation of love and duty goes from generation to generation. Og det er sådan videregivelsen af kærlighed og pligt går fra generation til generation til generation. Without guilt or fear. Uden skyld eller frygt. Mm. And just in a naturalness. Og blot som en naturlighed. It is only when parents become unnatural. Det er kun når forældre bliver unaturlige. That children get spoilt. 
and børnene ødelægges. Hmm? And so many problems arise, such as juvenile delinquency, etc. Der kommer så mange problemer, sådan som ungdomskriminalitet og så videre. So by meditational practices, we become natural and spontaneous. Så gennem at udøve meditation, så bliver vi naturlige og spontane. And that must, to a greater or lesser degree, reflect on the children. Og det må i større eller mindre grad give en genspejling på børnene. It is far better to create that feeling of freedom and spontaneity in our children. Det er langt bedre at skabe den følelse af frihed og spontanitet i vores børn. Far greater than leaving them 10 million kroners. Langt bedre end at give dem 10 millioner kroner. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Good. Uh, Next. Torben. Is one, is one, one. Mm. Spørgsmålet er, er essensen af ens dharma altid et offer? No. The essence of dharma is never a sacrifice. Dharma's essence er aldrig et offer. Because sacrifice means giving something which you feel is taken away from you. Fordi offer betyder altid at give et eller andet, som man føler tages fra en. But dharma is an offering. Men dharma er et offer. That contains in it so much joy. Som indeholder så meget glæde. Hmm? If I take a flower and offer it to you. Hvis jeg tager en blomst hmm? og giver den til dig. It is not only the flower that I am offering. Så er det ikke blot blomsten, jeg giver. Couldn't anyone get fresh flowers this morning? Joking. <coughs> I'm only joking. You know that. Hmm? When I offer this flower to you, it is not the flower that matters. Når jeg giver dig den blomst, så er blomsten underordnet. But the beauty of the flower is mixed, intertwined with the beauty of my heart. Men blomstens skønhed er blandet med mit hjertes skønhed. So through this offering of this beautiful flower, I'm conveying to you in a poetic form. Så vil, the beauty that is within my heart. så vil jeg give dig den smukke blomst, så videregiver jeg til dig på en poetisk måde et hjertes skønhed. So I'm not sacrificing a flower to you. Så jeg offrer ikke en blomst til dig. But an offering. Men det er en gave. Offering of my heart. An offering of my heart to you is a sharing with you. Og det er at give eller tilbyde mit hjerte til jer, er at dele. And when it comes to the highest level of offering, og når det kommer til de højeste planer af at give, mm, then I, the flower, and you are one. Så er jeg, blomsten, og du et. Huh? There is no difference. Der er ingen forskel. Mm? For the vibrational value of My love, expressed through the flower in its own form of vibrations, and the vibrations that are in you combine and become one. For mit hjertes vibratoriske værdi, blomstens vibrationer og dine vibrationer kommer et til at blive et. It is like a beautiful symphony or chamber music played by Preben on his oboe. <laughs> det er som smuk kammermusik spillet af Preben på hans oboe. How that sound of the oboe melts away in the sound of the other instruments. Og på den måde oboens lyd smelter væk i de andre instrumenters lyd. If you isolate that oboe from the other instruments of the orchestra, 
hvis du isolerer den obo mm-hmm. fra resten af orkestrets instrumenter, then the oboe has no value. Så er oboen ingen værdi. Mm-hmm. For her you are joining those vibrations of the oboe with the vibrations of the violin, of the piano, of the harp. It all becomes one. For, for her for, forener du oboens uh, lyd med de andre instrumenters lyd, og det bliver alt til et. And in that oneness, the beautiful melody arises. For denne enhed fremstår en smuk melodi. To pervade and permeate the ears and the hearts of men. For at gennemtrænge uh, menneskets ører og hjerte. Now, if it is done in that way, hvis det gøres på den måde, then it becomes an offering. Så bliver det en gave. And how much great joy it gives you in doing it. For offering not only brings joy to the one to which it is offered, for det giver ikke bare glæde til den, der modtager, but more so to the one that gives it. Men så meget desto mere til den, der giver det. Uh, you might have read the French writer Victor Hugo. I kan have læst den franske mm. forfatter Victor Hugo. And he wrote the story Les Miserables. Han skrev, han skrev um, Romain, Life Romain Miserable. Mm. In there, there is one scene where this man by stealing this loaf of bread for his hungry children. I den roman er der et sted, hvor, hvor der er en mand, som har stjålet øh, brød til sine sultne børn. Who was chased around by the police for that loaf of bread he stole. Blev forfulgt af politiet på grund af det brød, han stjal. Hmm? And he took refuge in a church. Og han gemte sig i en kirke. And he was thinking of what the loaf of bread is finished. He was thinking of what to do, how to live. So he tried to take two of the candlesticks, silver candlesticks, from the church. Og han spekulerede på, hvordan han skulle klare sig. Og så prøvede han at tage to af de sølvlyse staler, to sølvkandelabre, som stod i kirken. So as he was going out, The priest was there at the door. Når han ønskede at forlade kirken, så stod præsten i døren. And these words I will never forget. Og de så vil jeg aldrig glemme. And and it was this. Og det var det. That my son, life is made to give and not to take. Livet er lavet til at give og ikke til at modtage. Mm. 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 If you give me one krona to buy a slice of bread. Hvis du giver mig en krone for at købe en skive brød. And if I eat that slice of bread. Og hvis jeg spiser den skive brød. Remember. Så husk dette. That it is your entirety. Your love. Of that one krone for the bread. That will permeate my whole being. Så husker det din helhed eller din kærlighed igennem den ene, ene krone til et stykke brød, som vil gennemtrænge hele mit væsen. What a great closeness that this love brings. Mm. Hvilken, hvilken gave den kærlighed bringer. Mm. And love is to be felt first. Og kærlighed må først føles. And demonstration becomes a secondary. Og demonstration eller udvikling af det bliver sekundær. Mm. But it is human nature to demonstrate, to express. Men det er menneskets natur at demonstrere eller udtrykke. And that is how we express ourselves to our children. Og det er på den måde, vi udtrykker os selv til vores børn. We are essentially expressing love. Vi, vi, ud, vi giver et hovedsageligt udtryk for kærlighed. And demonstrating it in the various ways of giving them clothes and education and whatever is required in bringing up the children. 
for at udvise den hovedsageligt gennem at give dem tøj, mad, uddannelse og hvad der ellers er nødvendigt for at opdrage vores børn. Mm. And the greater beauty lies in this, that the child accepts in total innocence. Og den større skønhed ligger i det, at barnet accepterer det i fuldstændig uskyldighed. Mm. The child is at its finest until it starts thinking. Barnet er et fint menneske, indtil det begynder at tænke. Mm. Beautiful. Huh? Little baby in the arms. The warmth. The innocence. Det er så smukt at holde et lille barn i sin arm, den varme og skyldighed. Have you ever watched a baby being fed on the mother's breasts? Mm-hmm. Har I nogensinde set et barn blive arme? Ah, the lovely gurgling sound. Den vidunderlige gurglende lyd. <laughs> It's even better than Preben's music. <laughs> bedre, bedre selv end Preben's musik. Yeah. And to listen to the wind blowing through the trees. Og lyt til vinden, som blæser i træerne. And the whisper of the soft, the whisper of the grass as you lay your head down. Og græsets øh, bløde visken, når man lægger sit hoved mod det. The gentle warmth of the sun, as you bathe your body in it. Solens blide varme, når man bader sit mm. leme i den. And the lovely raindrops, bathing your body as you walk through the rain. Og de smukke regndrupper, som bader dit leme, når du går igennem regnen. How Beautiful life is. Well, you do How joyous. What I did. Hmm? Experience it. Upload it. Live it. Live it. And laugh with it. I'll leave me. Good. Next. Uh. <laughs> question the other day about uh, UFOs. I haven't written it down, so you probably have to uh, translate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, put it at the time, please. Uh, is there a technique or method we can be taught to contact aliens coming from other planets? I don't take no. Me Spørgsmålet er, er der en teknik eller en måde, som vi kan lære, hvor igennem vi kan kontakte fremmede fra andre planeter? Så er der nej. No direct technique. Ingen direkte teknik. But as you develop through your meditation a higher and higher awareness and sensitivity. Men efterhånden, som du gennem din meditation, du vil en højere og højere bevidsthed og sensitivitet eller følelse. Og then not only UFOs, but every other thing that had not been observable before. Så er ikke blot UFO'er, men også alle andre ting, som, ikke har, som man ikke har været i stand til at se før. Becomes observable. Bliver man i stand til at registrere. Mm-hmm. You look at a flower before meditation practices se på en blomst før man begynder at meditere and after six months or 12 months or whatever period of meditation you look at the same flower again og efter 6 12 måneder eller hvor længe man nu mediterer så se på blomsten igen and you will find a totally different value and totally different beauty in it og man vil finde en fuldstændig forskellig værdi og en helt anden skønhed i blomsten. And what creates that beauty, more beauty, is this. Og hvad skaber den øde skønhed? Mm. Det gør dette. The flower is the same, your eyes are the same. Blomsten er den samme, dine øjne er de samme. But your communication has grown. Men din kommunikation mm. er vokset. And the same thing happens with people, man and woman. Det samme sker med mennesker, mænd, kvinde. There is a subtle energy that everything emanates. Der er en meget fin energi, som alting udstråler. Mm. 
And as with meditation the energies or the emanation is sent forth more powerfully, og efter hånden som den udstråling sendes, mm. udsendes mere og mere kraftfuldt gennem meditationen, mm. the greater communication and interpenetration occurs. Jo større en kommunikation og jo større en sammensmeltning fremkommer der. Well, that is why living together husband and wife they develop a greater and greater oneness. Det er derfor det at når man og kone lever sammen så udvikler de en større og større enhed. Unless in the first place it was started off on the wrong footing. Men mindre det fra starten af blev begyndt på forkerte præmisser. Unless they were totally incompatible in the beginning. Men mindre de overhovedet ikke passede sammen i starten. And they were so drawn in by infatuation. Og de blev så i den grad draget sammen eller overskygget af, af infatuation. Infatuation, der jo. Infatuation. Infatuation, Anthony. Infatuation, everyone. Infatuation. Not real love. Not real love. But just a superficial mental attraction. Og, og uh, forelskelse eller overfladisk tiltrækning. Mm. And so they mistook unreality for reality. Så de forvekslede uh, uvirkelighed med virkelighed. Then with ordinary people the communication does not grow. Så vokser kommunikation ikke hos en mennesker. Never mind how hard you try. Ligegyldigt hvor meget man forsøger. But then you meet someone. Men så møder man en. And you might have known that someone for 20-30 years. Ja. Når man kan have kendt det menneske i 20-30 år. Mm. And suddenly. Og pludselig. There's an electricity. Som elektricitet. Mm. The light is just switch on with one flicker. Lyset tændes med mm. et øjeblik. And the light shines, and everything seems brighter. Lyset skinner, og alt synes lysere. The light had been switched on before. Der var også lys i forvejen. But that light was not noticed. Men det var der ingen, der lagde mærke mm. til. Because we wore dark glasses. Fordi vi havde solbriller på. Huh? And now we have taken off the glasses. Nu vi tager brillerne af. And we see clearly. Og vi ser klart. Huh? The light. Lyset. Mm. And we feel clearly the electricity. Og vi føler klart den strøm af elektricitet. There's one advice I want to give you married people today. Der er et råd, jeg gerne vil give jer, der er gift i dag. If you have twin beds in your bedroom, hvis jeg har adskilte senge i jeres soveværelse, Throw them away and buy a double bed. Smid dem væk og, og køb en dobbelt seng. <laughs> I tell you why. Jeg skal sige jer hvorfor. <laughs> and this has nothing to do with physical contact. Og det har intet med fysisk kontakt at gøre. Because in satsangs I don't talk about physical contacts. For i satsang taler jeg ikke om fysisk kontakt. <laughs> Every person and everything, hvert menneske og hver ting, this microphone, these flowers, these chairs, this sofa, mikrofonen, the tea, sofaen, yeah. blomsterne, yeah. alt. Everything is forever emanating a radiance. Alt udstråler. It is radiating. Det udstråler. Now, for a normal human being, There is a circumference of six feet of radiation. For the minute minute reason, there is an omkreis of six feet of radiation of radiation. I'm talking. I'm talking of a, a healthy, normal person. I tell you, the minute sort of person. Now, when husband and wife, even if they don't touch each other in other ways. 
når mand og kone, selvom de heller ikke rører ved hinanden på andre måder. And being close together for those eight hours. Og det er at være tæt sammen igennem de uger in time, sleep, mens de sover. Their bodies are still radiating. Så udstråler deres krop stadig energi. And when the conscious mind is asleep and the body is at rest, the radiation becomes more powerful. Og når kroppen hviler og det bevidste sind sover, så bliver den udstråling mere kraftfuld. Now how beautiful it is for the occultists call it aura. Occultisterne kalder det aura. Mm. We call it radiation. Vi kalder det udstråling. Now how beautiful it is for the radiations, the emanations of two people to bathe in each other even during sleep. Hvor er det smukt, når to menneskers udstråling smelter sammen selv, mens man sover. And that is how a greater and greater closeness can grow. Og det er sådan en større og større nærhed kan udvikles. So throw away the single beds and buy a double bed. Så smid de adskilte senge væk og køb en dobbelt seng. Det kan selvfølgelig også skubbe dem sammen. Det er lidt billigere. What was that? Well, I, I just advised you, but they could push them together. It's a bit cheaper than throwing them away. You're supposed to interpret and not give... You're supposed to interpret every word I say, not your opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No more competition. <laughs> if you put the beds together, there's still a dividing line. Oh, well, <laughs> And when two single beds are put together, those wooden portions hurt the back. <laughs> Det er rigtigt. Vi dropper den idé der med at beholde de gamle, fordi at når man skubber dem sammen, så er der stadigvæk en linje, og der er måske nogle sådan træsengheste, eller hvad det hedder, langs siden, som man kan få ondt i ryggen af sig. So why must you try and mix your radi- radiations, and then wake up with a backache? <laughs> I'm completely sabotaging my idea. So <laughs> oh, what great fun. Good. Lige Well, it's becoming really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honor also suggested that you could put a pillow between so that the wood is covered so you won't wake up with a backache. Now, what do you say to that? Seems to me you're talking of experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what fun, what great fun. Good. Next. Um. Jo, jo. Jeg har læst, at hvis skader andre væsener, for eksempel... Hmm. Det er ligesom at hænge i væsener, hvor den karme, og så kan man faktisk se nok så god en motivation for at gøre det. Hvad jeg skal prøve at se, om jeg kan... Um, the question is that... Uh, she has read that doing, say, mm, uh, experiments with animals, harmful experiments with animals, or harming uh, uh, beings in other ways, mm-hmm. uh, it'll always give you, karmically, a harmful effect. That's the idea, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter how good your motivation was, no matter how convinced you were that it was going to be for the good of mankind and so forth, mm-hmm. and. Uh, How do the accounts stand? Mm-hmm. Good. With that. By the way, before I answer your question, um, you have a very, very beautiful voice. To hand my smoke stem. Mm. There is a beautiful intonation and power in it. Then my smoke tone coffee. You should become a radio announcer. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now, it is a common thing in the world today. Det er en ting i verden i dag. And I had, I had long talks with Professor Barnard. Og jeg har haft en lang samtale med, med Professor Barnard. The man, the man that pioneered the transplanting of the heart. 
Men som var pioner ved hjertetransplantation. You must have heard his name, Dr. Christian Barnett. You must have heard now Dr. Christian Barnett. Yeah, it was he and his team that gave me a heart operation. Det var ham og hans medarbejdere der gav mig en, en åben hjerteoperation. Now they had been experimenting with baboons. Yes. De havde eksperimenteret med babianer. Both for a long time. I gennem lang tid. In other laboratories, we have people, scientists, experimenting with rats. I andre laboratorier har vi videnskabsmænd, som eksperimenterer med rats. guinea pigs and all kinds of animals. Og alle mulige forskellige slags dyr. And with these experimentations, where various kinds of drugs are injected into these rats. Og gennem disse eksperimenter, hvor forskellige slag forskellige stoffer just uh, to observe in these rotter just to observe the reaction it would have on the animals blot for at observere den reaktion det måtte have på dyrene and after hundreds of experiments when they find in their observation that the result is more or less the same og efter gennem hundredvis af observationer de finder at resultaterne mere eller mindre er de samme Then they start using those drugs or whatever on human beings. So they're going to have to use these stuff on humans. And then the human beings are also become nothing. Are not one hundred percent sure. For the most of the handling of of humans today, I'm not one hundred percent sure. Because medical science today. Um, do not treat a person holistically. For the medicine as a whole, it a ek behandle mennesker som en helhed. I was invited to a conference in Las Vegas, America. Jeg blev inviteret til en konference i Las Vegas i Amerika on holistic health. Om helhedsmæssig helbred. Mm. One person who was a physiologist spoke on the physical body in physiology tell them the physical limb and a psychiatrist on the mental self and sugiana on the mental self and i spoke on the spiritual self of man that tell them in the spiritual self and there's one thing i pointed out that science must stop <clears throat> creating a division between these three sections og der var en ting, som jeg understregede, da jeg talte, og det var, at videnskaben må holde op med at skabe adskillelse mellem disse tre områder. Because mind, body and spirit is not separate, but a continuum. Fordi sind, krop og ånd er ikke adskilte, men et continuum. From a grosser level to a finer level. Fra et grovere niveau til et finere niveau. I will give you a practical example of this. Det er et praktisk eksempel på. I get called to the hospital a few times, good few times a week. Jeg bliver kaldt til hospitalet af skille gange i løbet af ugen. To see patients. For at tilse patienter. Especially cardiac patients. Vi ser um, cardiac patients. Cardiac heart. Og hjertepatienter. Yeah. And patients with neurological problems and things. Og patienter med neurologiske problemer og sådan noget. I teach the meditation ja, and various practices. Og forskellige øvelser. So that a greater calmness is produced in them. Så der kommer en større ro over dem. Then whatever surgery is required, the, the patients become more conducive to the surgery. Sådan så ligegyldigt, hvilken operation de skal gennemgå, så bliver de mere rolige før operationen. Because most people are afraid. For de fleste er angste. Mm. So you give them a certain understanding, you give them by mouth a certain understanding, you make the mind feel at peace, you take the fear away, you give them techniques that will give them further greater peace and calmness. And this helps in the operations. So man will give them an understanding, an intellectual understanding of what is going on. Give them techniques that give the mind peace. Give them techniques that give the mind more peace. And that takes away the fear of the operation. Now there was this one person that was flown from Port Elizabeth 
to Cape Town. Now, Port Elizabeth is a city about 600 miles, 900 kilometers from Cape Town. There are in some blue from Port Elizabeth to Cape Town. Uh, Port Elizabeth and Buda Lega, 900 kilometers from oh. Cape Town. And he was supposed to go a heart operation to put in other wells in the heart. Og han skulle gennemgå en hjerteoperation for at indsætte nye hjerteklapper. So I started talking to this man, a very poor man, a black man. Jeg begyndte at tale med det, og det var en fattig nære. And he told me he was in a very upset state. Og han he fortalte, was upset. Og han fortalte mig, at han var helt ude af sig selv. And speaking, speaking to him, I found out that he was worrying about his two children. His wife had passed away. Og efter han som jeg talte med ham gik der op for mig, at det han var bekymret for var hans to børn. Hans kone var død nogle år før. He was worrying and he was in that state of mind where he was thinking that I'm here 900 kilometers away. I'm going to have a heart operation. I might not survive it. What will happen to my children? Han tænkte på her er jeg 900 kilometer væk. Det skal til at gennemgå en Mm. En alvorlig hjerteoperation. Jeg kan dø af det. Hvad vil der ske med mine børn? Mm. Now, in that state of mind, with that worry, it is easy for the operation to fail. Uh, en operation på et menneske i den tilstand kan nemt slå fejl. Mm. Because part of the operation also involves the will to survive. Fordi en del af operationen er også viljen til at overleve. Many of you that are nurses or doctors will know this fact. Mange af jer som er læger eller sygeplejersker vil være bekendt med den genskærning. So immediately I called for the social worker. Så lige med det samme, så kaldte jeg på mm-hmm. den sociale arbejder. So I got the social worker to phone <coughs> the Livingston Hospital in Port Elizabeth. Så jeg fik socialrådgiveren til at og ringe til Livingston Hospital i, i Port Elizabeth. And to get in touch with the social worker there. Og få fat i socialrådgiveren der. And this social worker in Port Elizabeth was instructed to go and see these children and also to go and see this man's employers. Og den socialrådgiver i Port Elizabeth øh, blev instrueret til at gå hen og besøge de to børn og også at, at tale med, med mandens arbejdsgiver, Paul mm-hmm. Elisabeth. And the very evening, the social worker from Livingston Hospital phoned back to Grøtteskjær Hospital in Cape Town. Og samme aften så telefonerede den socialrådgiver fra, mm-hmm. de, fra Port Elisabeth tilbage til hospitalet mm-hmm. i Cape Town. That the firm where this man worked for such a long time at the firma hvor, det, hvor den mand havde arbejdet i meget lang tid, will be sending his pay envelope every week to his children, and the children are well. Vi sender hans ugenlige lønningspose til hans børn, og børnene har det fint. Immediately this worry was gone med from det, the man's mind. Med det samme forsvandt den bekymring fra, min, fra det mandens sind. <coughs> and he just lit up as if He was relieved. Og han mm-hmm. så virkelig lettet ud. Ja, yeah, he was relieved because now he felt that his children are looked after. Han They følte, are not starving. Han følte sig lettet, fordi nu følte han, at hans børn var i gode hænder, og at de ikke sultede. And when a few days later he underwent the heart operation, it was very successful. Og da han få dage senere mm-hmm. gennemgik hjerteoperationen, var den meget... Mm-hmm. And so in the treatment of the body, the mind too has to be put at rest. So i behandlingen af kroppen og sindet uh, have fred. And this could be helped very much by our spiritual practices in drawing the spiritual energies to the mind and the body. Og det kunne hjælpes meget gennem vores meditationer ved at drage den spirituelle energi til vores sind og vores krop. I personally was born with a congenital heart disease. 
Jeg blev selv øhm, øh, følt med. From birth, my heart was defective. Med defekt hjerte. Hmm? About the age of 14 or 15, uh, I was ill for something else, some minor illness, and a doctor was called in. Da jeg var 14-15 år gammel, blev jeg syg af en eller anden mindre sygdom, og en læge blev tilkaldt. And he heard something wrong there. Han kunne høre, der var noget galt med hjertet. So he recommended to my people that you better get specialists and a thorough examination. Og han anbefalede mine forældre at få fat på en specialist og få foretaget en grundig undersøgelse. Mm. So they examined me, and it was the opinion of all the specialists put together that I won't live for more than six months. Og jeg, så jeg blev grundigt undersøgt, og det var disse eksperters mening, at jeg ville leve i mere end seks måneder. Så so I said to myself, like bloody hell. Så so, so jeg, so jeg sagde til mig selv, det var da også fændens. Yeah. And I'm still alive. Og jeg lever stadigvæk. I think so. Okay. So now, after giving you all these examples, after I give all these examples, I do acknowledge the cruelty to animals. So I yet, on this mode, tilhænger af af grusomhed mod dyr. That innocent animals are killed. Er du skyldig, in these experiments. Er du skyldig, du er dræbes i disse eksperimenter. But this world is so constituted. Men den verden er sådan indrettet. That we can and we have to perform a lesser evil for a greater good. At vi må uh, foretrække et mindre onde. Hmm? Eller foretrække et større gode frem for et mindre onde. Hmm. We know Killing of these animals is wrong. Vi ved, at det er forkert at dræbe disse dyr. Now the animal has a very, very much lower state of consciousness. Et dyr har et meget, meget lavere bevidsthedsniveau. While a human has a much higher state of consciousness. Mens et menneske har et langt større bevidsthedsniveau. Um, so, as I said before, sometimes a person has to perform a smaller evil for a greater good. Så so derfor siger jeg, at nogle gange må et menneske udføre en mindre ond kærning for at opnå et større gode. Now this might sound like a justification. Men det kan lyde som en retfærdiggørelse. But that is so. Men sådan er det. Mm. If for example, the doctors had not experimented on baboons, hvis disse læger for eksempel ikke havde spændt med bavianer og aber, I might have not been here speaking to you. Så kunne det være, at jeg ikke havde set, siddet her og talt til jer. You see. But I do object very much. Men jeg protesterer meget kraftigt. To killing of certain animals. For at dræbe visse dyr. Mm. So that their skins could be made in furs. Sådan, så man kan bruge deres skin til at lave you know, mink and, minker and all the other kinds. I don't know the names. Hmm? That I object to. Det protesterer jeg kraftigt imod. When natural clothing is available. Når man kan få tøj på en måde. Wool is available without killing the sheep. Man kan få uld uden at dræbe hmm? foråret. Cotton grows, it's available. Bommel vokser op af jorden, det kan man også få. And of course today, so many synthetic fibers are there. Og selvfølgelig er der så mange syntetiske stoffer i det. But to kill animals so that, uh, when you go to a party, oh, she had such a beautiful silver fox fur coat, ah. Hvor man dræber dyr for, at nogen kan have den glæde at gå til et selskab og høre andre sige, åh, oh, hun havde sådan en fantastisk sølvrev på. Absolut rubbish. Blau. Uh, Not necessary. Ikke nødvendigt. Hmm? Personal ego. Personligt ego. And you know the old story, that a woman wants to go to a party, 
Hun kender den gamle historie, at der er en kvinde, der ønsker at gå til et selskab. And she wants to have a special dress for the party. Hun ønsker at have en helt speciel kjole på til det selskab. And when she turns up there, she'll find half a dozen others who has a similar dress. Når hun kommer, så vil hun f- finde <laughs> seks, syv stykker, som har og har samme kjole på. Yes, so uh, this does not only apply to women, but to men also. Det, det er ikke det er ikke bare med kvinder at gøre, men det har også med mænd at gøre. Mm. Yeah, so boosting of personal ego, like fur coats by killing innocent animals. Så det er at oppuste sit personlige ego. I would not agree with that. Og gå med pelser og så videre, det bryder mig ikke om. Okay. Next. It's past 12, Guri. Yeah. Maybe we should stop or what? One question more? Okay. Okay. Et meget kort spørgsmål, hvis nogen har et. Jeg skulle faktisk over at spise. Er det et omfattende? Så heller gemme det til... Må jeg prøve at se det? I think this is this is this would be a quite a long one, Guruji. So, so what is it? Well, you can hear. Would you explain something about spiritual, uh, spiritual leaders? Um, what do you call good sort of guard, guardian angels, etc.? Which role do they play uh, in our lives here? I know nothing about that. No, I don't believe in guardian angels. There's no such thing. That is a subject for occultists. Yes. You don't have a guardian angel, really. You are your own guardian angel. The greater the awareness, the greater the spiritual energies would flow through you, and that is your guardian angel. There's no other being, you know, hovering around you, protecting you, and having some wings. You know, flying around you. These are mythological explanations of a deeper truth. Mm. Det er my- der er ikke nogen, der findes ikke nogen øh, bevinget skudsingel, som ligesom flyver omkring, men er sin egen skudsingel, kan man sige på sin mm. vis. Uh, det, det skal mere, de skytsængende med vinger skal mere forstås på en symbolsk måde. Det er mere symbolsk, det er en mytologisk sandhed. You see, these mythologies started in primitive times. Disse mytologier startede i primitive tider. Now, how would it be possible at those times to explain the development of awareness? Hvordan kunne man på de tider forklare om bevægelsens udvikling? and the spiritual energies that emanate from a person. Om de åndelige energier, som udstråler fra en menneske. So, to explain simple people, they created these guardian angels. Så for at fortælle almindelige mennesker om det dengang, så udviklede man ideen om disse skytsengler. And it served a good purpose. Og det tjente et godt formål. Because by nature, Man is fearful. Fordi af naturen, så er mennesket frygtsomt. Now you tell such a person, a primitive person, oh, don't worry, your guardian angel is looking after you. Fortæl dig sådan en menneske, oh, du har ikke noget at være bange for, din skytsengel skal nok passe mm. på dig. So do not be bang. Så so vær ikke bange overhovedet. <laughs> mm? Now that has a psychological effect on the person. Det har en psykologisk effekt på mm. det menneske. And gives the person some confidence. Og giver mennesket noget selvtillid. Mm. But in reality, what is the truth is this. Men det der i virkeligheden er sandheden er denne. That as your awareness expands, the sheath around you, the sheath, the emanation around you, automatically becomes a protection for you. Det, der sker efterhånden, som din bevidsthed udvides, så bliver udstrålingen omkring dig automatisk en beskyttelse for dig. And in reality, what do you have to protect yourself against? 
Og i virkeligheden, hvad, hvad er det, man skal beskytte sig imod? Det er incompatible vibrations. Det er vibrationer, som ikke svinger i overensstemmelse med hinanden. So being covered in the sheath of powerful vibrations, the incompatible vibrations cannot touch you. Så det at være omgivet af en kraftfuld udstråling gør, at de øh, vibrationer, som ikke passer i din udstråling, kan ikke gennemtrænge den eller røre en. And that is the real guardian angel. Og det er den virkelige skytsing. Mm. But we can put on our wings now. Men vi kan godt tage vores vinger på nu. And fly to lunch. Og flyve til frokost.